Dear Watchtower members, it takes humility to obey God. It also takes courage. When Peter was accused of being a follower of Jesus, what would be more required, humility or courage? When they were being imprisoned and beaten to stop preaching in the name of Jesus, was it more humility or courage that led Peter to say, we ought to obey God rather than men? Question. Why would the watchtower, in encouraging you to obey, spend far more time talking about humility rather than courage, as is the case in this week's watchtower study? And I may follow up with a dumb question. Could it be that they want you to be far more humble than bold? Let me put it another way. Could it be that when it comes to them, they want you to be more submissive? than strong. The Watchtower Study Edition September 2018 If you know these things, happy you are if you do them. Theme Text my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. John 4.34 Paragraph 1. Question. What effect could the world's selfish spirit have on our humility? Why is it a challenge to apply what we learn from God's word? One reason is that it takes humility to do what is right, and our ability to remain humble is under assault. Question 1. Are you humble enough to admit that you are wrong? Question 2. Are you humble enough to admit that the governing body is wrong? That is to say, if they are wrong. Question 3. Are you humble enough to admit, since the governing body has admitted, they are neither inspired nor infallible, and have erred in doctrinal matters since 1870? And since they admit that their understanding of the truth continues to change. Our understanding of the truth does change because we are not perfect yet. Can you therefore state with any certainty that what you are now being told is the truth, is in fact true? I submit to you that humility is just one of the problems. The other problem is courage. And I submit to you that your ability to be courageous is under much more assault than your ability to be humble. Allowing the world's selfish spirit to influence us could harm the loving relationships we enjoy in the congregation and our identity as Christians. Question 4. What poses a greater threat to the loving relationships you share in the congregation? The world's selfish spirit? or the threat of being disfellowshipped if you dare to stand up for what you consider to be true, if what you consider to be true goes contrary to what the organization teaches. What do I mean? Are you humble enough to admit that God is right when he said, Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and that the governing body is wrong when it says, since Jehovah God and Jesus Christ completely trust the faithful and discreet slave, should we not do the same? And when it says, So, whom do you trust? You fully trust in Jehovah, Jesus, and the faithful slave. It cannot be that God is right, that you must not put your trust in man, and the governing body is right in saying you must put your trust in them, as you trust God. Are you humble enough to admit that I am right? Because I know I am. Those are blatantly, obviously contrasting positions. So again I ask you, which is a greater threat to the loving relationships you enjoy in the congregation? The selfish spirit of the world or the courage to admit that the governing body is wrong? 
So if you never knew it was against God to put your trust in man, you know now. Question 5. Are you willing to obey and be happy in the Lord? Or would the organization serve to make you very unhappy by withdrawing the conditional love you now enjoy and possibly causing you to lose your family and friends? Question 6. Are you aware of the words of Jesus at John 6, 53-54? Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh, and drinketh my blood, hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. If you were not aware, you are aware now. Question 7. Why are you not doing what Jesus said? The answer lies in what you have been told by the watchtower. With that, I move to the end of the article. Yes, I did say the end. Wisdom is the most important thing. Paragraph 18. Question. How will we benefit if we keep applying divine instruction? Doing what we know to be right brings rich blessings. No wonder Proverbs 4, 7 says that wisdom is the most important thing. Jesus, the Son of God, instructed you to eat of his body and drink of his blood, symbolically, of course. How wise is it, or how is it wisdom by any stretch of the imagination? For you to shun the instruction of Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life, because of any explanation, whatever the explanation, any explanation given by men who are not inspired, men who tell you that their understanding of the truth keeps changing because they are not perfect yet. This is a gradual process. We are still roving about. I could go through the entire article and ask you many more questions. As I think of the Watchtower's history, there are tons of questions I can ask you based on their several false predictions and false teachings, which were dubbed as beliefs clarified. But I will not overwhelm you, because if you have some honesty in you, some humility in you, and some courage in you, you only need to ponder a few questions including the last one. Can you describe it as wisdom to be following men who Jehovah has exposed repeatedly as false messengers? What am I talking about? I leave you with words from the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society. And be it observed, that if this is shown to be a fact firmly established by the Scriptures, it will prove, firstly, that at that date, the kingdom of God, for which our Lord taught us to pray, saying, Thy kingdom come, will obtain full universal control, and that it will then be set up, or firmly established, in the earth, on the ruins of present institutions, based upon the argument heretofore set forth, then, that the old order of things, the old world, is ending, and is therefore passing away, and that the new order is coming in, and that 1925 shall mark the resurrection of the faithful worthies of old, and the beginning of reconstruction, it is reasonable to conclude that millions of people now on the earth will be still on the earth in 1925. Then, based upon the promises set forth in the divine word, we must reach the positive and indisputable conclusion that millions now living will never die. Jehovah God is the grand identifier of his true messengers. He identifies them by making the messages he delivers through them come true. Jehovah is also the great exposer of false messengers. How does he expose them? He frustrates their signs and predictions. In this way he shows that they are self-appointed prognosticators, whose messages really spring from their own false reasoning, yes, their foolish, fleshly thinking. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all.